Hello everyone out there in YouTube, Rumble, and Twitter land. That's right. I'm there too. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about it just like crap. Let's, uh, let's continue to talk about this uh, abortion of a show, all right? Now, I got to be honest with you here. Uh, I, I just finished watching uh, episode three. That's going to be a tough one to review, let me tell you. It's going to be a tough one to review, but I will review it because I, I swore that I would, okay? I'm a man of my word, okay? So I'm going to review it. <clears throat> but right now, <clears throat> excuse me, we are still on episode two, all right? I'm Diego. I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view, all right? The real question you need to ask yourself is, can you handle it? Can you handle the truth, okay? Because most of you can't. You can't. Sorry, man, but you can't. You want to live in lollipop land, okay? And this this show is most definitely lollipop. I mean, so was the original Sex and the City was too, but this one's even worse. This isn't even about these women anymore. This is about fucking goddamn fucking uh, Pride Month. This is this is what this show's are fucking about. Pride Month, twelve months every year. You know, it, it's this is that's exactly what this fucking show is. You know, and I'm sure most of us that's not what we turned in for. Nothing against that. You want to do fucking gay shows? Absolutely. Do fucking all the gay shows you want. Okay, but why do you got to turn a, sh a heterosexual show gay? That's what I'm talking about. Create your own fucking thing. The L word, queer as folk, all that shit's still out there. Fuck it, just make some more of that. Reboot that shit. What the fuck, man? Why do you got to go after Sex and the City? You know? It's just, it's just crap. It's just fucking crap, all right? But it's here. It's there. So what the fuck, man? Let's get, let's get, let's get this shit over with, all right? So, um... Well, we left off last time, okay, we did talk about Herbert Wexley, okay, Mr. Mangina, Mr. fucking Strap-On, and his wife, okay, and his mother, who fucking uh, likes to berate her fucking 45-year-old son, I think he's 45, he might be 42, who the fuck knows, who cares, you know, in front of his wife, berates him, her own son, in front of his wife, you know, her, da her daughter-in-law, and what happens when she walks out of the room, her, the wife, it's the wife's turn to fucking berate her fucking husband, too, okay? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's what this show is about. Fucking, you know. It's all about fucking taking it out on the guys, okay? The guys are all fucking pieces of shit. They're all worthless. Uh, they're all criminals. They're all fucking, uh, they're, they're all, they're all th th three categories for all the fucking men on this show. Number one, they're cowards. They're afraid. They're pussies. They're scared of everything. They're scared of women. Uh, they're scared to talk, stand up to them for themselves, okay? They're scared to do anything, okay? Number two, they're stupid. Okay, they're dumb fucks, okay? They couldn't find their fucking ass with both their hands without a woman there to fucking show them where it is, okay? They can't fucking feed themselves, okay? They don't know where the fuck they are, okay? They don't even fucking remember their own fucking name, okay? They're dumb fucks, okay? Number three, okay, uh, they're evil. They're jerks. They go around fucking just saying fucking misogynistic statements. You know, every woman's a cunt, every woman's a bitch, every woman's a slut. You know, uh, they fucking, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they trip women, they steal from women, you know, uh, they make fun of women, they, uh, fucking, you know, they're just, they're just evil, the bad guy, okay, that you see in every fucking, uh, in every fucking TV show and movie, okay, and almost exclusively they're all white, white guys, okay, they call women fat, they do all that fucking shit, right, okay, and then what happens, okay, before the episode's over, they get some sort of a comeuppance, so that all the girls in the episode are like, ah! See, that's what you get. You deserve it. That's what you get. Okay. Of course, when women are, are complete fucking bitches to men, nothing ever happens to them, and that's okay. Okay. Uh, but when uh, yeah, but when men are assholes, they have to get punished. It's in the script. They have to get fucking punished because uh, chances are uh, nine out of ten times, it's always a white guy that's acting like an asshole. A straight white guy, not a gay guy. The gay guys are untouchable. No, they don't do anything wrong. It's just the straight white guys, you know. They're what's wrong with the world. Okay, and I'm not even white, but even I see that. That's to, that, that's exactly what the show is. Or there there is a fourth category. Sorry, a fourth category is a combination of the above three. Whether two of those three or 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 all three of them, there's always a combination of those. Okay, he could be a coward and an asshole, or he could be an asshole and a dumb fuck, or could be, he could be um, a dumb fuck and a coward. 
okay? But it's one of those, it's a combination of those three. Okay, that is the fourth category, a combination of the above three, all right? That's every fucking TV show, that's every fucking um, uh, movie, especially in the fucking, in the, in the female dominated genres, which is pretty much everything, everything's been feminized. Uh, Star Wars, Marvel superheroes, it's all been fucking feminized, okay? Strong women, dumbass men, weak, dumbass weak men, okay? And that's exactly what this show is, okay? Now, uh, I had some problems with the original Sex and the City, okay? And my biggest problem was that they uh, they did not represent the men on the show correctly, okay? So every once in a while they did, sometimes they did, and I did point it out when they got the, the guys right, but most of the time they didn't, okay? It was a bullshit uh, interpretation of what fucking gay guys and middle-aged women think men are, okay? But that's not actually what men are. Okay, uh, so uh, and th this just shows even worse than that. I mean, that was bad enough. This show is fucking. They, there are no men on this show. There are no men. They're, they're caricatures of men. They're they're an idea, a gay guy's idea of what a straight guy is. You know, oh, I'll give him a football and and you know and, and so and some plaid shirts. You know, and you know that's pretty much all all it is. Okay, yeah, it's just this is this shit. This is fucking bullshit, man. The women are all prima donnas. You know, they're all they're all fabulous. You know, with their Gucci and their Chanel, you know, and their Vivian Westwood, you know, and their Valentino, you know, yeah, and their Prada. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Their Louis Vuittons, their Gucci, and all the other fucking gay shit that's on this fucking show. All right, let's just get this shit over with. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, so when we left off last time, like I said, Herbert was getting his ass chewed by his mom and then by his wife, okay? And, of course, he didn't stand up for himself. He didn't fucking nothing. Uh, even when his mom uh, talked shit to his wife, uh, he didn't stand up for his wife. He didn't tell his mom, hey, mom, don't talk to my wife that way. You know, he didn't even do that. And she sure as fuck, his wife sure as fuck didn't stand up for her husband when uh, when his mother was talking shit to him. <clears throat> she actually agreed with the mom. Yeah, absolutely, your mom's right. <clears throat> you know, yeah, that, that's exactly what happened here, Okay. Well, that's how the show rolls. All right. <clears throat> it's funny. You, know, you know what's so weird for me is that you've got so many characters, okay, in this show. They're trying so fucking hard to be portrayed as tough. Like man tough, okay? Like not in a feminine way, but in, in a masculine way. Okay, you've got women on here who are wearing suits, you know, who've got fucking hair shorter than mine, you know, who are trying really hard to be butch. You know, to deepen their voice, you know, to act like dudes, to dress like men, to act like guys, you know. And they're doing all this thing, these things because they want to associate with the masculine. Because the, the, to them, masculine means power. And they identify with power, okay? Whereas feminine means weakness to them. So they have to appropriate the masculine in order to fucking feel powerful. Because they don't feel powerful as they are, you know. And I don't understand why, if that is such a virtue to fucking have, then why is it that the guys that actually are that way are fucking vilified on this show? Okay? It's like, you know, it's good when a woman wants to appropriate all these typically male characteristics, but when a man is born with those male characteristics, it's bad. When a woman appropriates those male characteristics, it's good, it's brave, it's empowering. You see what I mean? You see the fucking hypocrisy here? This is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. It's the same argument they have with fucking trans women, or you know? The transgender community, when they have the fucking, when, when guys fucking put on a dress and lipstick and shit, you know? And now all of a sudden, they're more women, they're more feminine than, than real women are. How the fuck is that possible? They get treated better than women do. What the fuck? You see, that's what I'm talking about. And that's that's exactly the philosophy of this fucking show. That's the point of the show. It's not to fucking uh, to catch up with Carrie's dating life or to find out what happened uh, with Miranda's marriage or Charlotte, you know, and her family or, or fucking don't even mention Samantha Jones, okay? It's not about that, okay? It, it's about this fucking shit, this political message. That's all it is, you know? It's not about entertainment. It's not about fucking, oh, God, look how funny they're acting now. Oh, my God, look, these, these girls are funnier when they're older, you know? They're doing up stupid stuff, you know? There's so much fucking gold here they could have mined, okay? Watching fucking uh, Samantha Jones deal with her fucking, with losing her looks, you know? That would have been, that would have been an interesting show, entertaining show, you know? Watching Carrie deal with fucking marriage, you know, <laughs> with Big, now that they're both fucking old. 
trying to trying to act like they're young again. That, that would have been funny, you know. Watching Charlotte and Harry, you know, raising these kids together, you know. Maybe she goes back to work. Maybe maybe uh, Harry loses his job now. Charlotte's got to fucking be the the breadwinner, you know, <laughs> which is funny because she's never been in that role, you know. That would that would have been some gold here. That would have been some comedic gold. Okay, Miranda uh, gets fucking hit by a truck in the first episode. You know, uh, that would have been great. You know, this would have been fucking comedic gold here. There was so much they could have done. Said no, nah, none of that shit, none of that. Just just fuck it, fuck all the men, and uh, you know, and just you know, go fucking gay. Yeah, go gay. Go go the gay way. Be the gay way. That that that's that's the message here. You're not cool unless you're fucking gay. Okay, now you think I'm being stupid by saying that? Fuck it, I'm not the one that believes it. Okay, you don't believe that shit? Your fucking kids do. Your kids. Yeah. These kids out there that are fucking, that, that have, have no self esteem, and they figure out that if they act gay or trans or identify as this bullshit, also now they got friends. Now all of a sudden they're popular. When you're a kid, you're fucking immature. Of course, you. that's why you're a fucking kid. You see what I mean? And, and it's shit like this that promotes it. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, the next scene that we're going to talk about here, okay, we're still in episode two of season two, okay? Uh, Shay, okay? Shay is uh, doing her uh, non-comedy, okay? And she brings up Tony Danza on stage. Now, last season, she mentioned to Miranda that she was going to L.A. to film a pilot for a sitcom that's going to start Tony Danza as her dad. Now, the last episode, Tony Danza actually, actually fucking is here. And I thought it was a joke. I thought no way Tony Danza would be associated with this woke fucking bullshit. Well, sure enough, I guess he is. Now, it's kind of weird that I'm seeing Tony Danza on a fucking, uh, on, uh, and just like crap. Because my understanding was Tony Danza was retired from acting. Like, he hasn't acted in a while. Okay, and when he did act, he always acted like a guy. Okay, like a guy from Jersey, you know? Uh, he basically had that. He did that on Taxi, which is a show I watched a little bit of when I was a little kid. He most definitely acted that way, like, like a Guido on Who's the Boss, you know? <laughs> and I used to watch that show when I was a kid. Big fan of that show. I had a hot from Alyssa Milano before I knew she was a fucking cunt. Okay, and, uh, you know, so I knew, I knew, I, I kind of grew up with Tony Danza. I even used to watch those fucking TV movies that he did, okay, like where he was the cop. You know, he was the guy, he was the criminal that got his law degree in prison. <laughs> Remember that one, the made for TV movie? I saw that one. I saw that one. Okay. It was based on a true story, you know, that kind of shit. Okay. Uh, and uh, I do know about 10 years ago, he was in a movie called Don John. And that was with uh, Joseph Gordon Livett. And that was a guy's movie. That's back when they still used to make guys movies, guy movies. All right. And in that movie, he played uh, Joseph Gordon Livett's dad. Okay, he's this older guy, <laughs> you know, he's in a white beater like his son. His son's always walking around in a white beater and so is he. We got it from his dad, right? And there's this there's this incredible scene at the dinner table where the mom is there and the dad's there and Joseph Gordon Livis' character's got a, he's got a, a, a little sister that's there. <laughs> and she's talking and the, the mom is talking to Tony Danza and going like, hey, what was, he's like, what was the name of that song they were playing at the concert when we first met, <laughs> you know? And he's like, he like, looks at her, he's like, how the fuck should I know? That's 28 fucking years ago. I'm pretty sure I didn't give a shit back then either. <laughs> he's like, it says that. He's like, <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm sure I didn't give a shit back then either. <laughs> like he talked to his wife that way. It's like, <laughs> nobody, nobody acts like that in movies anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's the last time I saw him acting in anything. And then I heard he was like a high school teacher. Like he quit acting. You know, like he retired from it, but, but now he shows up in this shit. So what the fuck's going on with him? I don't know. I don't know, but it's sad. It's sad that he's going to actually put this on his resume. Was he really that desperate for work? I'm kind of guessing he was. Or maybe he's like a, like a John Leguizamo or something. He's just a woke tar. Just so was woke as fuck. And he can't wait to get into whatever fucking woke bullshit is out there. Okay, maybe he is. I don't know. I don't know him personally or nothing like that. But, uh, you know. It's sad that he would appear on this show, okay, because everything, you know how they say like a fucking a rising wave, you know, floats all boats, you know, which is true. When something is successful, anything associated with that successful thing is going to get an upgrade as well. It's going to be elevated as well. Okay, but when a sink is ship, when a, a ship is sinking like the Titanic, okay, it swallows up everything near it as well, okay? That's the opposite of that parable, okay? When a big ship is sinking, anything, any of the ships near it are going to get sucked in too. You see what I mean? And that's kind of what I think is happening with Tony Danza, you know, but hey, 
you know, I'm not sure. I don't know. Who cares, right? So anyway, so uh, yeah, so Tony Dan's is in this episode, and Shay brings him out, calls him out on stage while she's doing her fucking non-comedy. Okay, he stands up and waves at everybody. Okay, and Miranda. Uh, we're managing just fangirling. She's just there on the corner watching the everything and fucking she's always getting in the way of the waiters that are trying to serve the drinks there. Okay. All right. Uh, the next thing we have is Franklin. Franklin and Carrie. Now, Franklin is Carrie's boy toy. Okay. They're still in bed. Okay. Uh, working on the uh, Vag ad. Okay. Uh, Carrie's supposed to do a, a, supposed to record with her voice, just record a fucking vaginal, uh, a, 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 a suppository ad or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. Uh, something, something to do with your fucking, with your shit down there, okay? And she doesn't want to do it. She feels it's beneath her, uh, you know, and she really, really just not want to fucking do an ad for a vaginal product, okay? But her boss, the station manager, said that we have to do it. It's not a choice. Rewrite it if you have to, okay? But you have to do the ad, okay? Or else they're in danger of fucking getting the station shut down, okay? Now, what kind of station depends on one fucking product uh, to save it. It, it. That's kind of weird, too. But anyway, so they're trying to spitball here and come up with an idea, uh, some sort of a script to use when they record the fucking badge ad, okay? Uh, when, so while they're doing that, uh, Miranda calls, okay? And, um, you know, and she's and she's no help. No help at all, okay? Uh, Miranda uh, meets uh, Tony Danza, okay? That's at the after show. Uh, she meets Tony Danza. He's there. Okay. Okay. And um, he wants, uh, you know, he meets he meets Miranda. And then he actually stops himself. Goes like, uh, her, her. It, it is a she, right? It's a she. And then Miranda's like, yes, it is. Yeah, go see. He asked for, he asked her pronouns. He wanted to make sure that he used the right pronouns. Are you out of your fucking mind? Okay. Tony Danza, whatever respect I had for you, I just fucking lost it. Okay. I just fucking lost it. All right, no, 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 there is no fucking they, okay? Okay, that's a fucking woman. An ugly woman, uh, no doubt, okay? Cynthia Nixie's ugly as a fuck, okay? But it's still a woman, okay? It's still a she, okay? Um, it's one thing to watch a TV show, uh, you know, because most of us know that's lollipop land, okay? It's another thing to fucking live the real fucking world and pretend it's fucking lollipop land, okay? That's the fucking difference here, okay? No, 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 that's a fucking she. An ugly she, but a she nonetheless. Even Shay is a fucking she. She's a land whale, too, but she's a female land whale, okay? Uh, yeah, that, that's fucking fucked up in the head, all right? So, uh, yeah, so that's going on. So uh, he invites them to dinner. He thinks they should, all three of them should have dinner together. And, of course, what does Miranda say? She says, hey, you're the boss. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, yeah, funny, huh? That's pretty funny what she said there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, yo, are you Angela? Angela, Samantha, where's my fucking piece of shit, bitch, bread, Kavanaugh, loving daughter? Angela, Angela, get over here. I want to fuck you up the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Mona. Mona. <laughs> Where the fuck did she go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Tony Dance. <laughs> Angela. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I did, I did not mean uh, to start on that. It kind of just came out. <laughs> Anyway, so that happens here. Okay, the next scene. Okay, <laughs> the next scene is fucking Carrie. Uh, Carrie decides uh, to write her uh, her vagina monologue. Get it? The vagina. I, I've actually seen that show, the vagina monologues. I've seen it because one of my friends in Chicago, when I was living there, uh, she was an actress and she got cast in that role. Okay, for the vagina monologue. So we all went to go see her. Okay, do the perform the vagina monologues off Broadway. Okay, and yeah, it's exactly as, as stupid as you think it is. Okay, but I couldn't tell her that because she's my friend. But anyway, yeah. So that's going on here. Okay, uh, Carrie decides to write her own vagina monologue, and she looks over at the at her bed. She's on her laptop on her desk in there in her shitty fucking apartment, even though she's a multimillionaire. Okay, she looks over at her bed, and there's fucking Franklin asleep on her bed. Okay, and uh, I think the the look on her face. They don't tell us what she's thinking, but I think the look on her face. Okay, is like, um, you know, th there's no fucking internal monologue on the show like there was on Sex and City where uh, Carrie would narrate every episode. You know, all the segues were narrated by Carrie. That doesn't happen here. It's just her. It's just at the end. At the end, she says, and just like that, something. Okay, she says a sentence. But they don't do that here like they did on Sex and City. So we don't know what Carrie's thinking. Okay, but she looks over there and I can kind of tell she's just bored. She's bored of this, this guy, this fucking uh, this, this fembot. This male version of a fembot, he's got the fucking personality of a fucking paper bag, and she's just fucking him for his looks, 
you know, and he, there's just nothing, um, nothing ex extravagant about him. There's nothing special about him. He's just a fucking guy. Okay. That's there. There's nothing, nothing, um, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Nothing noticeable about him. You know, no, nobody that stands up in a crowd. He would blend in in a crowd. He's just a fucking nobody, an NPC, you know, just a guy in the crowd that no one pays attention to. Okay. Yeah. I can kind of tell that's what she thinks when she looks at him. Okay. Uh, the next scene here is uh, Seema shows up uh, to see uh, Juan Jose. That's her hairstylist that she berated uh, earlier in this episode because he was giving her advice. She was complaining to her, to him, her hairstylist of 10 years, for 10 years, uh, uh, that her boyfriend, Zed, uh, was still living with his ex-wife. So she broke it off with him and she told she told her hairstyle. She told uh, Juan Jose, hey, this, you know, that's a red flag. You know, and I have standards and shit. He told her, well, the reason you, you're you alone at your age, at 52 years old and you're fucking alone is because of your red flags and your standards. Okay, but he said it in the gay way. So she got pissed off and fucking fired him. Okay, and said, hey, I, you know, I pay you to blow me, blow my hair, okay, not to shrink me, okay? And then she talked to Carrie about it. Carrie immediately changed the subject to, to her problems uh, uh, with recording that vaginal ad that she does not want to do. So anyway, so she shows up there with her hair looking like shit, Seema does, okay, to see, to basically beg Juan Jose uh, his, his forgiveness. She's decided to forgive him, you know? She shows up with fucked up hair and she apologizes. She actually bought him uh, like a bottle of liquor or some shit, okay, as, as a forgiveness uh, gift, you know, and she's back, okay, and she says she's back with Zed. She, she took him, him back, okay, and he tells, uh, he tells all of his uh, clients uh, what to do with their lives. He says, I tell him what to do. I tell her what to do. I tell her what to do, you know, uh, no one ever listens to me. They do what they want anyway, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> So he doesn't really give a fuck. It's just the way that he is, okay? All right. Uh, so the next scene is Miranda, okay? She's wearing a green lesbo hat. Uh, think fucking Gilligan's Island, but instead of the white one, it's a green one, okay? She's out on the fucking beach with all the other fucking trash, okay? And the seaweed and the ugly fucking creatures that live there. Yeah, she's out there with all of them, and she's picking up all the fucking seaweed and the trash, okay? Because she's volunteering, okay? Now, of course, the woman, uh, the highly tattooed woman that she met in AA that asked her to help volunteer, she immediately splits and goes, hey, I got to go. Sorry, uh, you know, uh, you know, can, you can get an Uber or something, right? Because she was that was her ride, okay? <laughs> you know? And she fucking splits splits immediately okay because i think she just tricked fucking miranda to go in there uh to, to take her spot from having to fucking clean the beach all right so miranda says like okay fine go do what you gotta do all right okay uh so while she's while miranda's on the beach naya okay naya calls uh and she's very upset and she's in the middle of fucking throwing out all of her husband's shit okay uh because uh, her husband um uh, Andre, uh, he wants her to have a surrogate. He wants to have a kid, but with a surrogate. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that fucking Nia's just o over this by now. Like, no fucking way. I'm done with this asshole. He wants to have a kid so bad. He's threatening divorce. If we don't have one, fuck this guy. I'm too fucking old. And the truth is, I don't really want one. I want a kid. I kind of just want to be a, a college professor, you know, and to teach the kids about how to fucking hate white people. Okay, so that that's her passion in life. Okay, that's not his. He wants a kid. He can't have a kid because his wife is too fucking old. So he's gonna take it out on her. Okay, so now he also threatened to fuck another woman. So yeah, he actually did that earlier in this episode. So of course she's pissed off. She's throwing out all this stuff. Like I said, only a dumb fuck does that. Only a dumb fuck, okay, uh, tells his wife, okay, that hey, listen, uh, if you don't do something that I want, then I'm gonna fuck another girl. Nah, dude, that's bullshit. I don't know what the fuck kind of marriage that is. That's not a fucking marriage, all right? Anyway, so Nia's all upset. She's trashing everything, throwing all the stuff, and of course she's uh, talking to Miranda about it. Miranda's all about fucking, you know, hating men. So that's fine. It's right up her alley, okay? You know, uh, that's going on here. Okay. And then some Asian guy is staring at Miranda while she's talking to Neil on, on her cell phone. Okay. He's staring at her because she's on her cell phone and they're supposed to be fucking these, uh, you know, uh, save the planet type of green people, you know, uh, you know, so that pisses her off, uh, for, um, for being on her, on her cell phone. So he's, he's just giving her the fucking evil eye. Like, this Asian guy, and because he's Asian, uh, she can't say shit to him, because if she did, that's racist. Okay, remember the Oppression Olympics that we talked about that before? Okay, well, he's higher up there than her because he's Asian. Okay, so she can't talk shit. To she's white, so she's lower on the hierarchy, okay? <clears throat> but she is a lesbian, uh, but nothing about this scene communicates lesbian other than she's fucking ugly, you know? So that you can't really, like, that's not, that's not, that's evidence, but that's not proof, okay? So, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so she's fucking like, uh. You know, this guy is staring at her. Uh, so, so she gets off her phone, okay? And she's like, hey, listen, you know, I'm here to, like, hey, you know, we're all here trying to save the earth. And he's like, the earth is already dead. We're just cleaning the corpse. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not funny. Yeah, so that, yeah, he's one of those. He's one of those, which is pretty much all of California. Okay. Uh, and, and, and Miranda takes offense, okay, that he was that woke. He was like, he outwoked her. Can you believe that? He was too woke for her. You know, his fucking climate control fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that was way too much for her. She couldn't handle that, that level of fucking uh, environmentalist uh, bullshit. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, fucking Al Gore right there. Okay, moving right along. Uh, Charlotte and Carrie go to the real deal, okay? And that's the store where they go to your house, okay? Uh, preferably if you have a 15-year-old there, okay? And they will buy all your expensive shit that your parents bought you. They'll buy it from you and give you cash for it. That's how Lily raised the money to buy herself an electrical keyboard that her parents initially did not want to buy because it, it was too expensive, so Lily just sold her clothes. Now, Charlotte's upset. She's not upset at Lily. She's upset at the real deal for taking advantage of their daughter uh, for for uh, uh, breaking into their home like a vampire, uninvited, you know, and and manipulating their daughter into giving up her prized fucking Chanel dress, you know. So uh, Charlotte wants it back, okay, but she doesn't want to buy it back, which is what Anthony told her to do. What the fuck? She traded in her shit just so she could get something she wanted more. She wanted that fucking keyboard. You wouldn't buy it for her, so she sold her shit. You know, get over it. Just buy back the fucking dress if that's if it's that important to you. And she's like, that's not the point. If I do that, then they win. They will give me back that dress, and they will give me an apology note, too. So Charlotte's on a mission to be a fucking Karen, to be a fucking bitch, which is weird because she was not the bitch on the show. Out of the four girls, okay, Charlotte was the nicest one, okay? The bitch on the show was fucking Miranda, and after that, it was fucking Samantha, okay? But Charlotte was the nicest out of the four, and to see her fucking be uh, reduced to a fucking Karen is fucking disgusting. It's really bad enough that I gotta look at her fucking Botox face, which she never had before on the original show, but now she's gotta act like a fucking Karen, too. A Karen dressed like fucking Mary Poppins, okay, who berates her fucking husband, who's a piece of shit fucking mom, okay, and now she's, she would rather take out her frustrations on a fucking innocent fucking uh, a clerk at a store uh, than fucking on, on herself, on her own fucking family. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So it's a power play. It's all about her fucking ego that says she's got to prove here. Okay, so she goes over there, and uh, Carrie, uh, she's, she's dressed like fucking Mary Poppins, of course she is. Uh, meanwhile, Carrie, uh, now I know what happened to my fucking CVC suit that I had when I was in the Marines, okay? My Nomex suit, okay? It's called a, a combat vehicle crewman suit, okay? It's what I wore when I was in a tank, okay? Because it's fire resistant, okay? We all wore that inside of a tank. Uh, when you're in the military and you're a tanker, you wear that shit, okay? Well, I found out what happened to mine. Fucking Carrie stole it. Because Carrie's walking around New York City in my goddamn CVC fucking jumpsuit, okay? And she's carrying a fucking fake bird. What the fuck did that come from? What the fuck she doing with a fake bird and wearing my fucking CVC outfit? But apparently, that's what the fucking multimillionaires that fucking murder their husbands in downtown Manhattan. That's what they wear. Uh, that's what they wear when they go to the real deal. Okay, so you got Mary Poppins and fucking in my uniform and a bitch in my uniform, a hag in my uniform. All right, so they go in there. Okay, and Charlotte says, "I will kill them with kindness and get my dress back." And I will bring her home by her. She means the dress. Okay. Okay. Uh, and like I said before, Charlotte, you are not all there. Okay. You're fucking in fucking fantasy land now. You're in lollipop land. Okay. Where I think you've probably always been. Okay, you know, I mean, shit, you haven't had a job since fucking 2003. Okay, uh, so that's going on. Okay, and the clerk would rather uh, be on her phone uh, than talk to the customers that are in the fucking store. Okay, uh, and then when they do ask her, hey, do you know about this? Do you know who I am? Okay, do you, did you get any of the messages that I sent you and the, all the emails that I sent? She's like, no, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's basically what she's doing. Okay, so Charlotte decides to go full Karen on her. This innocent little Asian girl that works there. She looks like she's probably 19 years old. Okay, and uh, Carrie... Uh, decides that she actually wants to do a little bit of shopping. She actually likes the stuff that's in the store and she finds a pair of boots that she holds on to throughout the rest of the fucking scene. Okay? And she said, oh my God, how is that nobody? And no, I don't know what the fucking the kind of boots they are. I don't give a shit. You know why? Because I'm not fucking gay. And she said, oh my God, how is it nobody's bought these? And she's just like, I don't know. You know, she doesn't know shit. You know? And so anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> And then fucking as Charlotte grabs Carrie and goes to take her to the cycle there, Carrie, you are sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> In other words, should think about that for a second. Charlotte, this 56, 57 year old rich as fuck woman who's got nothing to do all day because her husband makes all the money. She doesn't work. Like I said, she hasn't worked since 2003, but she's a multimillionaire. And she's, she's wearing these ridiculous clothes, but they look like they cost about 10 grand. 
okay? And she walks in the store for the purpose of berating a helpless fucking uh, girl who works at a counter who's probably making minimum wage, okay? So that she can enforce her power. Okay, think about that. Okay, this is your protagonist on the show. Who the fuck wants to root for, for a woman like this? Okay, anybody that's ever worked customer service like I have knows these are exactly the kind of people you don't want to serve. You don't want to serve people like that, okay? Because nobody gives a shit about us. We have to take the fucking abuse, okay? We have to take the fucking abuse, and we can't say shit because the customer's never wrong, you know? So if the customer uh, makes fun of your mom, okay, makes fun of you, and calls you a piece of shit, you have to just fucking take it because the customer's never wrong. You see what I mean? And this poor girl has to put up with fucking Charlotte right now, and it's fucking disgusting, okay? Yeah, I've never ever, uh, in the entire time that I've ever watched an episode of Sex and the City, any of the fucking episodes ever, and even this piece of shit show, okay, and nothing in the first season either, have I ever seen Charlotte act like a fucking Karen until now. Okay, you have fucking destroyed this character completely. That uh, Charlotte was the one that wasn't like, like a Karen. She wasn't the Karen. That was her point. That was her character. That's back when fucking Candace Bushel wrote this shit. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, so it turns out next scene is Miranda's back on the beach in L.A. She lost her phone. Okay, so, uh, you know, so she can't call an Uber. Okay, so um, she asked the Asian guy that, that doesn't like her. Hey, listen, you know, uh, Uber, I got, how am I going to get Uber? And he tells her, uh, Uber's a Ponzi scheme. Then he walks away. Yeah, Mr. Personality, okay? And so she goes through all the fucking, all the garbage that she picked up. She goes through all the bags of the garbage to try to find her phone, and she cannot find her phone, okay? So she borrows a phone from some stoners. There's some guys over there. One of them is just showing off his abs, okay? A bunch of stoners. They're just smoking weed uh, by the truck, and she goes over there, and she has to borrow their phone. Of course, they're nice and helpful. Why? Why are these white guys uh, being treated with a little bit of respect here? They're treated as nice, benevolent guys. You know why? Because they're fucking stoners. That's why. Because they're stoners, Okay, uh, if they weren't doing fucking illegal drugs, okay, then they would be the bad guy and she wouldn't be able to approach them. Okay, but because they're fucking uh, smoking weed, smoking weed, doing coke, drinking beers, uh, you know, uh, then they're the good guys. That's a good thing, right, Gavin Newsom? All right, anyway, so that's going on here. So, of course, they let her borrow a phone because they're good guys. They're stoners. We all know that stoners are the nicest guys in the whole world, okay? And they're even fucking uh, chewing on fucking pizza there as well while they're in the back of the truck, okay? So, yeah, so she borrows the phone from Mr. Abs there, okay? And uh, Carrie gets the call, okay, while at a store with Charlotte. While, she, while Carrie's, Carrie's at the store with Charlotte when she gets the call from Miranda, okay? Miranda doesn't know Shay's phone number. She can't call Shay. She doesn't memorize the phone number, okay? So she asks fucking <laughs> Carrie to fucking call Shay, okay? Okay, and give her this number, okay? So Shay can't go uh, to the beach, uh, because uh, she's having there, there. Her and Miranda supposed to be having dinner with fucking Tony Danza in one hour. Okay, well obviously Miranda's not gonna make it because she has no fucking phone and she has no car. Okay, so we start hearing fucking Hotel California for some dumbass reason. So Shay says, "Okay, I'm gonna send somebody to come pick you up at the beach." All right? Okay, okay. Uh, someone to get her. Okay. So that, so that so now we know someone's coming to pick up uh, Miranda, but Miranda's not gonna make the dinner with Tony Danza. Okay, the next scene is Charlotte. Charlotte is threatening the young girl behind the register. Her name is Eden, by the way. Okay, the young girl that works at the real deal, the real steal, or whatever. Okay, and uh, and the clerk, while she tells uh, she tells her that the dress is on hold. She looked up the dress that Miranda that, that Charlotte was concerned about. Okay, the Chanel, and she said it's on hold, so nobody can buy it right now. Okay, uh, so Carrie, uh, you know, is clinging to those boots for dear life because she really wants those fucking boots. Okay, and uh, uh, she gets a uh, Carrie manages to get uh, Charlotte to calm down. And quit being such a fucking bitch, okay? And Charlotte realizes uh, that Lily won't even fit into that fucking dress anymore. Okay, this is all about Char uh, Charlotte's ego. She doesn't want to let go of the past. She doesn't want to admit that her fucking children are growing up, okay? And that their baby clothes aren't going to fit them anymore, okay? Because she spent so much time picking out these clothes that for her daughter to just, just carelessly uh, give them away uh, does not sit right with her. So it's all about Charlotte. It's not about her daughter. It's not about doing the right thing. It's not about fucking growing up. Okay, it's all about her ego. I, I, I spent money on that dress because I liked it. And my daughter gives it away and I don't like that. I want it back. Even though there's no practical reason to have it anymore. You see what I mean? She doesn't want to let it go. It's all about her ego, okay? Okay, uh, so yeah, Charlotte, I mean, Lily won't even fit into that dress anymore, okay? She, she's like, I feel like she's rejecting everything that I gave her. Well, if she had been, she'd be a fucking decent human being. But since she's not... And neither is your other fucking daughter, okay? Then no, they've accepted your fucking parenting. God damn. 
And then Carrie says something that was very meta. I thought it was very meta. Carrie says, or is it that is it that she is outgrowing it? Okay, maybe Lily's just outgrowing it. You know, but then what do I know? Once again, she's going to change the subject to herself. Okay, what do I know? I'm still fighting to save sex in the city. And by that, she means the podcast. Okay, but we know, we know she really means the franchise. Okay, the IP. <laughs> but maybe it doesn't fit me anymore. No fucking shit, Sarah Jessica Parker. It doesn't fit you anymore. Nobody wants to see your fucking 57 year old ass having sex. Nobody wants to fucking see that. Even fucking Ferris Bueller don't want to see that. And he's the one that has to fuck you every day, okay? Come on, man. Come on. Nobody wants to see these old ladies. This is like the fucking Golden Girls. Nobody wants to see this shit. Come on. You're all still fucking alcoholics. Like, what the fuck? Grow up. God damn. Anyway. Charlotte decides that she doesn't need the dress after all. Okay, so a waste of an episode. Okay, and, and uh, she has the, the memories, which is enough, and she still has her daughter, so that's enough for her. Okay, boom, good for her. All right, I'm going to stop my review right here, but I'll be back again shortly to continue my review of And Just Like Crap. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I will see you.